Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, I welcome all of you to His Holiness Chandramani Swami daily class. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear Sukhwa Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. All glories to you. So uh, today uh, we are going to have uh, Continuation of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto uh, 1, Chapter 13, and Verse 15. Uh, Sukhva Mataji, should I share the screen? or You are on mute, Mataji. Sorry, I'm not the host, so if you can share the screen from Sushma. Sure, sure. Thank you. Over to you, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to our Guru Maharaj and all glories to assembled devotees. Um, I would put this particular verse. This is so important and I don't think so. I'm quite capable of saying stuff, but I'll try and share something. But please be interactive uh, so that I know that I won't make you sleep. And um, help me if I may say something wrong, please correct me. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So we'll start with the prayers. Um, one second. Oh, let me just. I'm just trying to adjust my screen. Just give me one minute, yeah. Okay. So let's start on this one. Om Gyana Timirandas, Gyana Anjana, Shalakya, Chakshuram, Nitamena, Tasma Shri, Guru Vena Mahal, Monday, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Manobisam, Sapi Damena Bhutale, Swam Rupa Kadamayam, Nadati Sapadam Pikam, Sunday Ham, Sri Guru, Sri Tapate Kamalam, Sri Guru, Sri Guru, Sri Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sagana, Ragunathali, Vitam Tam Saji, Pam Satvaitam, Savadutam, Parijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padam, Sagana, Ranitari, Sri Vishakam. Hey Krishna, Karuna, Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagat Pate, Pisha, Gopika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Namut Pate, Pasta Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavanishri, Vishabhanu, Sute, Vevi, Pranamami, Hari Priya, Vancha, Kalpada, Rujasya, Kripa, Sindhu, Vaya, Vichya, Patita, Nam, Pavne, Pyo, Vishnu, Namo, Namaha. Hey Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadha, Siva, Sri Pohara, Pasta, Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, Chapter 13, Verse 15. Abhi Pratta Aryam Dandadam Dandam Yathavad Agakari Su Yavad Dad Dara Sudravantam Sapadvarsha Satam Yama. Word to word translation by His Grace Sri Prabhupada. Uh, I think Prabhuji has gone a little bit low. So. Is that okay, Mataji? Yeah, that's better. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. My screen is just playing up. Don't know why. Yeah, okay, that's better. I think it has gone, the word to word has gone up again for my screen. I don't know why. 
have to go down a little bit, please. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Abhibrat administered. Aryama, Aryama, Dandam, punishment. Yathavat, as it was suitable. Aga Karisu, unto person who had committed sins. Yavat, as long as. Tathara, accepted. Sudratvam, the table, tape, the tabernacle of Sudra. Sapat, as the result of a curse. Varsha Satam, for 100 years. Yama, Yamraja. Translation, as long as Vidura played the part of a Sudra, being cursed by Mandukamni, Aryama officiated at the post of Yamraj to punish those who committed sinful acts. Purpet by his divine grace, Chila Prabhupada. Vidura born in the womb of a Sudra woman was forbidden even to be a party of royal heritage along with his brothers, Dhritarashtra and Pandu. Then how could he occupy the post of a preacher to instruct such learned kings and kshatriyas as Dhritarashtra and Maharaja Yudhisthira? The first answer is that even though it is accepted that he was a Sudra by birth, because he renounced the world of, for spiritual enlightenment by the authority of Rishi Maitreya and was thoroughly educated by him in transcendental knowledge. He was quite competent to occupy the post of an Acharya or a spiritual preceptor. According to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, anyone who is conversant in the transcendental knowledge or the science of Godhead, be he a Brahmana or a Sudra, a householder or a sannyasi, is eligible to become a spiritual master even in the ordinary moral codes maintained by Chanakya Pandit, the great politician and moralist, there is no harm in taking lessons from a person who may be by birth less than Sudra. This is one part of the answer. The other is that Vidura was not actually a Sudra. He has to play the part of a so-called Sudra for 100 years, being cursed by Mandukamuni, he was the incarnation of Yamraj, one of the 12 Mahajanas on the level with such exalted. Go, go, please. On the level of uh, with such exalted personalities as Brahma, Narada, Siva, Kapila, Bhishma, Pralada, etc. Being a Mahajana, it is the duty of Yamraj to preach the cult of devotion to the people of the world as Narada, Brahma, and other Mahajanas do. But Yamraja is, um, Yamraja is always busy in his uh, Plutonic kingdom, punish, uh, Plutonic kingdom punishing the doers of sinful acts. Yamraja is deputed by the Lord to a particular planet, some hundreds of thousands of miles away from the planet of Earth to take away the corrupt souls after death and convict them in accordance with their respective sinful activities. Thus, Yamraja has very little time to take leave from his responsible office of punishment, the wrongdoers. There are more wrongdoers than righteous men. Therefore, Yamraja has to do more work than other demigods who are also authorized agents of the Supreme Lord but he wanted to preach the glories of the Lord and therefore by the will of the Lord, he was cursed by Manduka Muni to come into the world in the incarnation of Vidura and work very hard as a great devotee. Such a devotee is neither a Sudra nor a Brahman. He is transcendental to such divisions of mundane society. Just as the personality of Godhead assumes his incarnation as a hog, but he is neither a hog nor a brahmana. He is above all mundane creatures. The Lord and his different authorized devotees sometimes have to play the role of many lower creatures to claim the conditioned souls, but both the Lord and his pure devotees are always in the transcendental position. When Yamraja, has, uh, Yamraja thus incarnated himself as Vidura, his post was officially officiated by 
Aryama. Pramuchi, can you go up a little bit as well, please? One of the many sons of uh, Kashyapa and Aditi. The Aditya are sons of Aditi, and there are 12 Adityas. Aryama is one of the 12 Adityas, and therefore it was quite possible for him to take charge of the office of Yamraj during his 100 years absence in the form of Vidura. The conclusion is that Vidura was never a Shudra, but was greater than purest type of Brahmana. So this is very powerful uh, purpose, basically, you know, describing Vidura. Um, we have seen um, the, like, we have heard the story of Vidura, how did he come back to, I mean, he, how was he cursed? But I'll just brief upon it a little bit. That um, story of Manuka Muni, he was um, meditating in his ashram and some of the thieves, they've stolen some jewelries and money. They were running away from the police and they come to Manduka Muni's ashram and hides everything inside the ashram, thinking that, okay, police will not enter this ashram. And the, but unfortunately, police enters the ashram and uh, caught all the thieves and, and Manduka Muni along with them, thinking that Manduka Muni was a part of the uh, thieves uh, team. Um, so everyone was taken into the jail and then the punishment was announced and which was very harsh punishment is called shula punishment where some where the prisoner has to sit on the shula and the the arrow just enters from the rectum all goes all the way to the brain so that the, the nearly person divides in the half which was really harsh sort of a punishment um, but when king comes to know that uh, manduka muni was given this punishment he stops judge to punish Manduka Muni and releases him. But Manduka Muni was thinking, why did Yamraj, because this is the job of Yamraj to punish the human beings for their bad deed. And Manduka Muni was thinking, why did that ha this happen to him? So he, and, and la like yesterday's a class we heard from Sri Devi Mataji that at that time it was very easy to travel to another planet. So Mandu Kamuni goes to Yamraj to ask him that why, why did Yamraj uh, arrange this, this punishment for him? So Yamraj explains him that uh, it was because um, Mandu Kamuni in his childhood had pierced an ant and this punishment was the result of it. So you know, this is very scary for us that anything we do in our ignorance, like child, he didn't even know what he was doing it, basically. But the punishment, what he got for that sim that sinful act was really harsh. So Manduka Muni was being very highly elevated soul. He, he said to Yamraja, this is not the right thing. You can't punish me so harsh with just for the act which was done in the innocentness of my childhood and um, you're not fit for being Yamraj you know you, you can't judge properly so I'm cursing you to become Shudra this is the Shudra's act you have done so you will be Shudra for 100 years and go take a birth on the earth and basically that was, that's what happens that um, Yamraj takes a birth from the Shudra woman's womb and uh, called Shudra. Uh, so, sorry about that. But uh, actually, Vidura, whose incarnation of Yamraj, was a Mahajan. So, we have briefly said some names of the Mahajan, but can anyone tell me all the 12 Mahajans' names? I mean, everyone can say one each, please. Shall we do that? Marjan's name. Lord Shiva. Yep. Yamaraj. Yep. Vishnu. Sorry? 
Pralad. Yeah. Bishma. Yeah. Then the most famous one you're forgetting. Bali Maharaj. Hmm? Bali Maharaj. Yeah. Brahma. Narada. Kapila. Yep. Manu. Yes. Then. Who was Branchar in the Mahabharat? Grandfather. Bhishma. Bhishma. Yeah. <laughs> then. Bali Maharaj. Four Kumaras. Sukha and Sukha. So that covers all 12 of them. Okay. Um, another, another thing. Do you know why were they called Marjan? What, in, what does Mahajan means to you? What do you understand? Why they, they were the great, greatest devotees of Lord Krishna. Yeah. And? So basically, official definition of Mahajan as per Vedas is, Mahajana means those who are authorized person by God. So like, you know, Prabhupada explains in his class that, you know, he has done 12 GBC and the authorized persons are GBC persons like that. Krishna has authorized 12, 12 merchants who, are, who has got the authority to speak for um, God because they know the law of God. So they are the marjanas as per the definition. This is the Vedas definition, by the way. So yeah, Yamraj was one of the Mahajan. So he was like well elevated personality. He was not even Shudra, he was not even Brahman. He was just above every every Varnashram caste. Uh, similar to uh, in the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy of that, you know, when Krishna took birth as a hog to uh, save the earth, he was not a hog, he was not a Brahman. He was like just an incarnation of Supreme Personality of Godhead who comes to save the earth. So similar to that, um, the wish of Yamraj to preach was fulfilled by Krishna and uh, he was made Shudra. So normally in this Kali I don't think so anyone is born Brahmin or Kshatriya. We all are Shudras. As per, Shila Prabhu, as per Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Charitamanath, he has mentioned that we all in Kali Yuga will be born as Shudras and that's the Shudras job is like laborers or serving someone. That's what we do. We serve everyone uh, basically. Uh, but we can elevate to Brahmana if we approach the spiritual master and um, like in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna has mentioned that if we approach humbly to spiritual master and gain some knowledge, we can elevate to the level of Pramanas. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been very kind that uh, he has not kept the caste strictly. Like if you're born in Shudra, that doesn't mean that you cannot preach or you cannot elevate to the level of Pramana. Uh, if you are if you have a knowledge and uh, gain from the uh, bona fide master, then you can be like in this case, Vitura becomes uh, uh, competent as competent as Acharya. So, do you know what Acharya's position is? What what who is Acharya? Anyone? Acharya is the teacher who uh, teaches actually 
by an example. So he's, he himself is an example. He preaches with his own example. So that is what Vidura was. So he, he uh, being a Shudra person, he, he didn't think that he can't, he cannot preach, you know. He renounced himself. He went to a Maitreya Rishi, gained all the knowledge. So he was capable of preaching and he did do that to his brother who needed uh, to be saved that like we saw in the previous verses that uh, Dhritarashtra was staying with Yudhisthira Maharaj after the war, which should not have been, which is not right thing, which he should have done it. So Vidura just came back to just, in, just to tell him that look, this is what, you, to elevate actually specifically elevate uh, Dhritarashtra and um, give him the knowledge that what he should be doing it. So he didn't think that, oh, being Sudra, I can't do that. So that's exactly applies to us a lot as well, that we can't think that, oh, we cannot do this. We cannot do this devotional service. We can offer any devotional service in the, in the, in the platform of spiritual uh, world. As Chila Prabhupada mentioned, there is no caste. There is no Shudras. There is no Kshatriyas. Everyone can do anything. We can perform any devotional service but and ready to offer any devotional service. So that is another important lesson which has been taught by Vidura to us a lot as well. Um, another another um, uh, story, if, if, you, if you want to hear, uh, there's another good story connected to this verse as well. I can say that uh, about the gaining the knowledge. You can gain it from anyone and uh, you should be ready to gain, uh, accept the knowledge from anybody. You should not be thinking that, oh, this person is not um, Brahmana or not elevated person, so I, I should not be taking knowledge. As long as it is Krishna conscious knowledge, we can take it from anybody. So there's a, a story of, um, uh, wait one second, let me just see from there. Uh -huh. uh, there is a story of um, uh, Bilfa Mangal Thakur who was uh, it, the, the Leela happened in this Pushyottam month so I would like to talk about that Bilfa Mangal Thakur um, he uh, it, the Bilfa Mangal, Mangal Thakur uh, in his previous life he was great sannyasi and great devotee of Lord Krishna he was at the level of bhava you know, in the bhakti level, there is a bhava level. He was at that high high level and having intense love for Krishna. So he was fond of, or he was fond of organizing Bhagavatam festivals after which he would, and then after that festival, he will distribute the prasadam, food for people who would attend the festival. Now, once, once while organizing this festival, he has spent all his money he needed more money to feed devotees. So he went searching for the wealth. By, uh, and he was walking around um, everywhere and he couldn't find anywhere any, any, anybody can give him any donation or anything. So he saw a cremation of young lady princess who have died at the age of 18. Uh, there, were, there was her, her unhappy father, mother and all citizens were there and father is little, lit the fire and everyone then left away. Princess was burned with many diamonds and golden ornaments on her body, basically. So uh, the sannyasi uh, Bilva Mangal Thakur sowed all this and thought, what is used to that body of, of princess, all this valuable jewelry? Better take all these and use it in the service of Krishna and devotees. So he approached the dead body and tried to take jeweled ornaments, but then he heard the voice said, stop it, don't take this. It was the voice of the dead princess. So Sanyasi was shocked. And he said, um, if you need wealth, then go to my father, the king. Tell him that I have sent you. Under my bed, there is a box with great treasure. Ask my father for that wealth and use that wealth to serve devotees and Krishna. So this is what that princess told him. So Sanyasi, so Bilva Mangal Thakur, happily went to the king and revealed what has happened. 
So King looked and really found a great treasure under the bed of the princess. King happily donated that and uh, that great wealth to the sannyasi. Bilba Munga Thakur took that wealth and uh, spent all the wealth again in the Bhagavatam festival. But in the end, again, there was a shortage of some wealth. So he went to the cremation place of the princess and took the diamond necklace. As he was going, going, he heard the voice of the dead princess again. So he said, she said, you have done a great mistake by taking this necklace. I curse you that although you are so advanced in your love for Krishna to take birth one more time and live an immoral life, basically. So in his next life, the sannyasi was born as a woman hunter. Uh, princess has also taken birth again and his, uh, as his prostitute, Chintamani. In this lifetime, she has shown him the way acting and uh, is instructing Guru, basically. So the prostitute made uh, Bilbam Thakur realize that uh, he shouldn't be like, you know, being a woman hunter and all those things. So uh, Bilbam Mangal Thakur was so fallen that um, even when his father was died, he could not stop himself going to Chintamani. It was like a stormy night. He, he, he could not see much. So he used the snake as a rope and he used the death body as uh, um, the pedal and and he went, uh, he crossed the river, bank of the river, went on the other side of the river and to Chintamani. And Chintamani was so disgusted of him, saying that, you know, you're so fallen, so fallen. How can you, if you would have done a 10% or 1% of what hard work you did to come to me in the service of Krishna, you would have been more elevated. And that's where. Uh, Bilva Mangal Thakur uh, eyes opened up and he said, oh my God, what am I doing, you know? And, you know, like the prostitute opened the eyes of Bilva Mangal Thakur in the next birth as a Bilva Mangal Thakur. And then uh, Bilva Mangal Thakur pierces his eyes. He says, oh my God, I sh uh, he asked for the pin from the prostitute and just pierced his eyes and said, I don't want to see all these things. If I see these things, then I, I get attracted to the women, so I don't want to see. And then he was he even he goes to Vrindavan and then he performs all the austerity and penance. And then uh, eventually uh, he is so his love for Krishna develops, and Krishna comes as a child to him and guides him and um, you know plays mischief with him and everything. And uh, Bilba Mangal Thakur, Thakur didn't realize it's Krishna, but he still feels that Krishna's present there in Vrindavan. So yeah, uh, this moral of the story is basically that um, our wealth in life should be properly earned. We should not be stealing anything from anyone, although it's a dead body. Uh, even when we want to serve Krishna or his devotees, it should be properly earned a belt. Otherwise, we have to suffer the consequences of bad karmas. So the two stories tells us the same thing that you know, even in even the karma performed in the ignorance also uh, gives us the suffering, basically. Uh, so um, Vidura was uh, so now coming back to Vidura. So he was like um, well elevated, and he get he got all this knowledge. And he, being on the earth, he showed all the characteristics of the pure devotees. Uh, he, when he was cursed, he did not, he was not attached to his position, but being Yamraji, so it was quite high position Vidura was on, like, you know, punishing everyone. But he wasn't very happy being, like, punishing everybody for their, their thing. It's a sad job. So he just left it straight away and uh, came to the earth. Even when um, Dhritarashtra and his sons, the Duryodhana and Nemlur was not were not um, treating him well, um, he did not get much offense from their side. 
he was upset uh, about the treatment, but he did not took so much offense. But he still continued um, directing the trust in the right way, guiding, uh, uh, um, advising Duryodhana in the right direction. Uh, but unfortunately, they did not take it. But he, uh, the Pandavas, did listen to Vidura and the, his instructions. So they were saved from so many calamities, like, you know, Varnavrat. And um, after that also, uh, Vidura told them to go away and stay somewhere and all those. So um, he was, he, 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 Vidura showed those characteristics of the devotees that um, always he spoke uh, about the Krishna and Dharma. He never been biased or partial. Um, anyone else knows the qualities of pure devotees? There are 26 qualities. Anybody can tell me at least one? Humility. Yes. Kindness. Okay. Yeah. Tolerance. Tolerance. Yes. Sahishnuta. Mm -hmm. Same thing, Sahishnuta tolerance, yeah. Just a day before I was yeah, studying all those qualities. <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, it's it's easily we forget it. So that, that's why I was thinking that if we if we go through them, you know, that will help us. So yeah, it, it's um they they do not get entangled into the sense gratification, basically. Uses and sense his yeah. senses for the service of the Lord instead of are his own sense gratification and which which Vidura showed always like you know he was he was not worried about himself he was living in the small house which was given to him by his brother but he never had that um, desire to stay in the palaces where Dhritarashtra and Pandu were living so is he was he 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 was not entangled into the sense gratification. He was all, always ready to engage into the devotional services. So when Krishna said that, you know, when Krishna came for the peace, and he said that, oh, he doesn't want to stay to uh, Duryodhana's palace. He will go to Vidura's. So he was ready to serve Krishna. And even in even before that, every time whenever he come across Krishna, he will be ready to serve him. Um, plus he his. Uh, devotional service was in, in his work as well, which he was not attached and he was not expecting anything from anyone. Like, you know, he was giving right directions to everybody, but he was not expecting anything in return. So which shows like, you know, the devotees should work without any attachment to the fruits of the action. So that's another quality Vidura was showing while he was here. Um, and then he was... Uh, he was the one who surpassed the stage of the mental speculation. So, like, um, he was he was fixed in his mind, basically. He, was, he did not have two things. Like, whenever he will give the guidelines, he, he has got proper direction. He will not be bewildered or he will not say uh, two things for the same thing. He won't be... Uh, like politician, he won't play du diplomacy or anything. He was straightforward. He was so that was another good quality Vidura had. Um, then um, who else were there? Um, make uh, yeah, he did. He did. He did not try to make anyone as an enemy. That's another quality of the pure devotee. It's very truthful, but no, does not try to harm or hurt anyone. Um, the, no one can find any fault on him, basically. That was another characteristic of the pure devotees. He was um, magnanimous and very gentle, uh, humble, which you, which you guys have told us. Um, he was very clean, always clean. Um, does not have any possession. So he was not attached to any of the possession. He was living in the small, simple house and his life was very simple. So no, 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 no greedy, basically. Um, he, he worked for every time for everyone else's benefit. A very peaceful, um, always surrendered to Krishna, which we described. Uh, he has no material desires, which we discussed about it as well. He's very meek, 
steady in mind and controlling his senses. This is what also we discussed. He does not eat more than required. Uh, that, that, that was one of the austerities uh, devotees do, that they only eat a little bit to maintain their body. Um, he's not influenced by the Lord's illusionary energy because he was leaving, he was surrounded by the all these um, glories of palaces and uh, jewelries and everything, but he was he never got influenced by that. Uh, he was he was respectful to everyone uh, and does not expect any respect from anyone else. Uh, he was very grave, merciful, and very friendly. Uh, he was poetic, uh, expert in his um, profession, which he was basically because he was, he was minister, he was made minister because of his knowledge. And even after the renunciation, what knowledge he got, he, he achieved up to the Acharya stage as well. So he was a good example of how to live his life. And he was very quiet as well. Only, uh, only respond if it is asked to be responded. So yeah, uh, he's such a great character. And you know how much ever we say about Vidura is less, and um, I'm not even qualified to say much about Vidura, basically. So yeah. Uh, okay. So thank you so much for listening to me very patiently. And uh, I'm opening up for the, any comments, any corrections, please say. And if you have any questions, I'll try and answer. Otherwise, you can check with the Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji, for such lovely, wonderful class with so many good pastimes, so many uh, good uh, nectarial points. So thank you very much. It's quite thank you. Uh, useful. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, comments, realization, please uh, unmute yourself, uh, ask the questions, share your uh, realizations or any comments. Uh, if you cannot, then please type in the chat window. I will read on your behalf. And also request if you can switch on your videos if possible. Thank you. Actually, Skandit Mataji, you know, previously when you asked the question about the Yadu wants uh, when I gave the class. So that was, you were right, that, that uh, Yay Yati's son who uh, created the Yadu dynasty, Krishna was from that Yadu dynasty. I checked it. Thank you for asking that question. Gave me some work. <laughs> I, I can see some, some messages on the chat about the qualities of the pure devotees. Oh, thank you. Only thing is Acharya, is Acharya position is the one who um, shows by the performance, not the founder of the school, sorry. He's an example. I didn't make everybody sleep, did I? <laughs> Nobody's saying nothing. <laughs> No, it was very good, Mataji. Uh, and in fact, uh, like as you mentioned rightly in the class also, and uh, I raised the same point to Guru Maharaj last week, this Vidura pastime of previous birth, such a uh, scary thing in one way, that uh, especially that uh, Muni yeah, pastime, um, this uh, uh, Manduka Muni, yeah. It's yeah. just hurting one ant uh, in childhood time. You have to go through such serious uh, punishment uh, that uh, it's like kind of uh, made uh, to die. So it's like really how much we have done, you know, in our I've life. Like so many, like <laughs> knowingly, I was just like, killing the insects in India <laughs> because they were not good, hurting. <laughs> In childhood time, so many. So it's really like, I don't know what life we are going through in future, but uh, I think as Guru Maharaj always says, uh, forget what we have done, think mm -hmm. what we can do now in future. 
Definitely. And if it is done now as a devotional service to Krishna, then uh, we won't get a Karenistin. And another thing Srila Prabhupada did mercifully say that if we accept prasadam, we get rid of our sins slowly by slowly and get purified. So nothing to be too depressing for a devotee. So yeah, we should continue our practice definitely. Scarlet Mataji is good. Hare Krishna, and thank you very much for today's class. Um, you say something that I have wondered uh, for, for a while, but I every time I'm looking for the answer, it comes something else uh, which I'm looking at, and then I forget that. Uh, you say Grandfather Bishma. Hmm. Ha have I understood wrong that he never married, he never got child, right? Mm -hmm. How can we call him grandfather then? Because he was elderly and at the, at the uh, so for Vidura, the, his father, uh, basically father's father uh, stage, you know, even for Dhritarashtra also, which, uh, they were, uh, uh, although he was not married, but there was nobody else there at that stage. So everybody was treating him like a grandfather. Mm -hmm. Although he didn't marry, but you know, when uncle is on that stage, he was an uncle and he was at, this, at that level. And so they were treating him as a grandfather only and everybody was calling him grandfather. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think he was primarily called grandfather or by yeah. all the Korvad in Pandavas because hmm. and he was loving them as, as a grandfather as well, wasn't he? It was such a, he was another elevated soul. Like when we when we study him, it will be so much we can know about him. He was such a great personality. I hope the skeleton Mataji, uh, you got the answer of your question. Thank you. Devdi Mataji, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, hi Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hi Krishna. <laughs> Mataji, thank you so much uh, for a very nice class. Uh, so Mataji, just uh, uh, maybe I have uh, I couldn't catch that Bilu Mangar Prabhu's past time you were mentioning. So because of the offense he did, he was born as a woman. Uh, woman hunter. No, a man who's woman hunter. You know, very low type of, like who goes to the prostitutes and the, that sort of a personality. Yeah. I didn't catch that. I thought like Chintamani. Uh, so he was, uh, got attached to Chintamani. Chintamani, the prostitute, yeah. Okay, so that's a curse. Uh, so, yeah. okay, okay. And the Chintamani was that that princess who opened his eyes out. There was this, like, you know, that dreamers of the princess is a prostitute, basically. Oh, so she was a princess, Mataji? Okay. Yeah. In the previous life, the princess whose yeah, neck was, was the stolen by Bilva Mangal Thakur, yeah. That's a very cruel thing, right? Taking uh, jewelry from the... No. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, you know, Srila Prabhupada says that when you are in the high position and if you uh, commit a little bit of uh, offense, then you suffer a big punishment because of the, your position, high position, basically. Yes, Mataji. And also, like I was thinking about uh, the mistakes we do in ignorance, still we have to go through that. But uh, we are doing so many mistakes, like uh, in ignorance, even in devotional service also while executing. Out of ignorance, we do so many mistakes. So sometimes uh, it's also scary. <laughs> like, uh... But, uh, you know, with the devotional service, Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj even said that, that uh, it is like we, Krishna knows that we are practicing. We are not the high, high pure devotees, say that way, the high, higher standard devotees. We are still practicing stage. It's like for us, we, uh, like a child, you know, small young kid, the toddler, we are still in that stage, basically. So if we fall down, 
then Krishna will give us a hand to get up as well. And he understands that we will make mistakes, but he won't stop us coming up and performing more devotional service. Eventually, we'll get it. So those, those offenses are not taken as on offenses by Krishna because uh, we are practicing our devotional service at that time, mm -hmm. if it makes sense. But yeah, the non-devotees, imagine how much they will suffer because how much, yeah, yeah, in this Kali Yuga, oh my God, how many offenses we are creating. Even like, you know, the five offenses we do while cooking, like lighting a fire, we burning so many germs. While drinking water, we are killing so many germs in the water. Breathing air, walking on the road, we are killing so many insects and germs and smalls. We can't even see them. So all those, those things are there. But if we are performing all those activities, like, you know, cooking for Krishna, that, that we don't occur any sin there. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are performing devotional service and going to the temple, then we don't get any sins. If we think that we are going to the work as a service of Krishna, like being a Krista, we need to do that. And uh, uh, using the whatever income comes for the uh, Krishna service, then all these things, we don't get it. That much merciful Krishna is. So yeah, it's not, it's not that bad for us <laughs> if we continue our practice. Okay, Mataji. So while executing devotional service, as you said, even though we don't do it perfectly, we'll not incur sins, even though we no. do mistakes. As long as we have got the Krishna in our mind and performing for Krishna, yes. As long as we have the right desire, we don't incur. Yes, yeah. right desire, we don't. Okay, that uh, gives little relief, Mataji. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> Tila Prabhupada is telling us. So yeah, <laughs> definitely when he says something, yeah. Because Shila Prabhupada said that, you, you know, if you uh, just be devoted, he made it so simple for us that follow four regulative principles, chant your 16 rounds, uh, keep Krishna in your mind every time, offer the service to Krishna, offer the devotional service, and you will be fine, you will be go back to Godhead. So what else do we need now? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, do you have another question? Yes. May I ask, uh, it's not exactly relevant to today, but still it there is. Uh, you you say prashada. Hmm. Uh, is it only in the temple that it caused prashada, or when I do it at home uh, that I offer first and then eat? Is that also prashada? It is prashada, as long as okay. you offer it to Krishna. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. As, as, as long as you prepare the uh, bogas being clean that's the main thing so you should be clean with your uh, devotion and offer it to krishna that becomes prashadam and prashadam is so important that when we cook the grains um, the our consciousness goes inside the grains so that's why uh, shila Prabhupada was saying that when you're cooking prashadam it's good to uh, either chant or listen to Kirtan or listen to the class. If you do that, you will see how much difference in your food it becomes. It's so uh, anybody who eats it also, they will find it that, okay, yeah, this is so good. Something beyond this world, like when we go to the temple and we have prashad, we feel that feeling is there that, oh, wow, we, had, we are so satisfied basically. And uh, there was, uh, I had one devotee's class as well that uh, he was a Muslim devotee, but he was uh, coming to uh, Iskon temple and he was uh, getting into the devotional services and started to study. But somehow his parents pulled him back and then took him away. And then, then he went to other, other sects and they tried to get knowledge from them other religions but uh, he wasn't satisfied anywhere so after a few years he come back he came back to the temple where he was going before and uh, the devotees that the, the devotee who was giving the class he said oh i haven't seen you for a long time where were you and he said oh i i went to other other places so everywhere but i was not satisfied i could not get 
main thing I could not get is a prashad anywhere, which I get it from this temple. And that not, it wasn't satisfying me. I was getting food, but I wasn't prashad. So the prashad, so many, it's, prashad has got so much of potency in itself only. Especially Prashad at uh, Vrindavan Nath Prabhu's house. Amazing. <laughs> Mataji made so good food. Prashadam is Prashadam. I think, like, one other thing I was feeling, uh, Sukhova Mataji, if you allow me to add. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that it's a full supply chain. So it's like whoever is eating, whoever is cooking, uh, definitely getting benefit of uh, Krishna mercy. But also the trees from where this mm. food is coming, they also get. That's the only way for trees to get mercy. Definitely, like, yes. Uh, otherwise, like there's a way they accumulate their uh, uh, human life. They get it. Credits. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they can take human birth sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly. Right. Thank you for reminding that as well. Yeah. I've forgotten to mention. Yeah. Because we so many times we get that. Uh, argument from other people that oh being vegetarian you you cleaning the plants basically so that is that there is a living entity so what what's what's happening there so we are not getting any sin because we are offering it to krishna and the plant gets mercy and becomes human eventually in that next life so yeah thanks for reminding that I think it's nearly the time if anyone has yeah, got I think any questions. Last one yeah. To go. yeah. We can. If not, if nobody is going to ask the question, we will ask what Sukhava Mataji asked you know, in the Shamanda class. 26 qualities of devotee, everybody has to write that essay. The next question who is Acharya, who is Mahajan, list of Mahajans. Actually, you know, that's that's not a bad practice to do. I've started doing that. Because then 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 it gives you remember take away, some takeaway for ourselves, actually. Mm. It's so easily we forget it. When we study mm. that, we remember, oh yeah, 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 this is right, this is right, this is right. But then it goes out of the memory. In Kali Yuga, we don't have good memory. So yeah, mm -hmm. revising is good. Thank you. So even if you don't write here, but we can write in offline mode, all these things. We are think good things, I agree. Uh, very nice things which Mataji mentioned in today's class. Good to understand who is Acharya, who is Guru, who is spiritual master, who is Mahajan, why these are Mahajan. So good. Okay, if no any other questions, no comment uh, from devotee, then uh, Sukhova Mataji, with your permission, I uh, can close this contest. Yes. It's their mercy. Thank you very much for today. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you.